In today's video, we're gonna talk about the anabolic rebound post-competition diet. Good morning, my fitness friends. This is Paul from ProPhysique.com. It is Tuesday, and uh, today we're going to talk about a single question. I know lately I've been having multiple questions per video, but this is going to be a pretty full-on topic because I really want to delve into the science behind it. Don't often delve too much into science because I like to keep this video series into the realm of just basic understanding. And if you guys ever want a deeper understanding of where my uh, beliefs come from, happy to do that. But for this video, I got a question on my post on Instagram, which is up to 92 comments now. So you guys are killing it. Thank you for the great questions. And I plan to just keep on rolling through them. Might not get done until March, but we'll get there. So the question is from How Vu. And it's a really good question, but first, uh, let's go ahead and put it on the screen. We'll just get right into it today because I feel like today's video might have a little bit of length to it. So I'm going to put the video, put the question on the screen right now, read it to you, and then we'll discuss it. Official Hal Vu. A lot of top NPC IFBB coaches swear by the anabolic rebound phase post-show where they claim the body's metabolism is at an all-time high and will therefore grow at an exponential rate with a rapid increase in calories. Does this only apply to enhanced athletes or are there just behind on scientific research? This is the opposite of what is recommended by most natural coaches where we would normally reverse diet slowly as there are usually metabolic adaptations that occur. Most of us are familiar, if you've ever competed or even have friends who have competed, most of you are familiar with the idea that when you diet for a, for a competition, you spend months and months in a caloric deficit getting yourself into peak prime condition, low body fat, as much lean muscle as you can, filling out, looking good on stage. And immediately once that show is over, we go out and we stuff our faces. It's actually kind of part of the culture of competing. I remember the first time I competed back in 2008, uh, I was posting on the bodybuilding.com's forum and there was even a thread that was just about the foods you were gonna eat once the show was over. People would go to the grocery store and stockpile Oreos and uh, Little Debbie snacks or you know frozen pizzas or whatever it was that they were missing. They would stockpile them and take pictures and say, "Look what I'm going to eat the week after my show." And I even bought into that. You know, like the first time you do a competition, you're depriving yourself for so long. You kind of feel like, "Hey, I deserve this. I, I deserve to to uh, go eat a bunch of stuff that I haven't had." And I'll say after my first show, now granted, after my first show, I did not know if I was ever going to compete again. It wasn't running my life. It was, I want to try this out and see if I enjoy it. Immediately once I got off stage, the following week, I remember I still felt like pretty lean because I didn't go out and go crazy. You know, I went out and had a couple things. But I remember going to work on Monday. I had been for months eating at, at, at the office. You know, I'd bring my food and eat while everyone went out to lunch. Well, on Monday, you know, I went out to lunch with everybody. And then I remember on the drive home, passing Dairy Queen and thinking, oh, I haven't been to Dairy Queen in a while. Stop there, I got a, got a Dairy Queen. Then I remember, you know, on the way home, driving by Burger King, I haven't been to Burger King in a while. Literally, I did that all week. Every time I passed a place I hadn't been in a while, I just stopped and ate. Well, you can imagine, I was up quite a few pounds in a short period of time. So this question really drives home something that I've thought about for a long time, and that is, is there any benefit or is there such a thing as the training immediately post-show for all the gains, for all the benefits, your metabolism, your muscle gains, it's never going to be better than it is post-show? Well, frankly, that's bullshit. It's not the case. And I'm going to explain to you why today. But to do that, I want to reference a case study that was done by a friend of mine. Chris Foz is a natural bodybuilder, and the case study I'm about to show you was done at the University of Oklahoma with some friends of mine, Dr. Jeremy Lenicky, who wasn't a doctor at the time, and some others, and I'll post the link to the study below so you can actually read the case study word for word, and it's a good case study to read because even if you don't have a super science-y background, you can understand it. So. Look below for the link to the case study 
and uh, review it, and I think you'll you'll enjoy just looking over it. I, I know I still look at it to this day. This case study represents an entire year of Chris's life, a year in which he dieted down for a show and then reverse dieted out of the show, and it covers everything from strength and mood to hormones. And it's not been done very often. Another friend of mine, Dr. Peter Fitchin, did a similar case study, but he didn't have as many uh, variables controlled for his, but he obviously saw similar results. So I wanna go over those results with you guys today and explain to you why immediately post contest is not a good idea to just stuff your face and think that you're going to put on a bunch of muscle. You're not going to put on a bunch of muscle, and I'll show you why. Let me go to the board. All right guys, so what I've done is I've taken the case study, which I've linked below, and I've pulled out some important information that is relevant to this topic. Why is it so important immediately post contest to not believe that you're going to put on a bunch of muscle, that your body is primed for these huge muscle gains, lean body mass progress? Well, let's go over the, the case study. So in this case study, you'll see I have represented here, Chris Foz, you'll also see I have represented some Information, and then I have six, zero, and six. Six represents six months before his competition. Zero represents the competition. The next six is six months post-competition. So what's very cool about this study is it doesn't just study up to the competition and then quit. They actually did follow-up research to see what happens to things like hormones, body fat, and strength, right? So the important thing to take note of here is that Chris is not an amateur bodybuilder. Chris was a natural pro, and a good natural pro at that, because during this season, he actually qualified and competed at the World Championships. At the time, that was the IFPA Yorton Cup. So Chris actually did so well this season that he was able to compete in natural bodybuilding championships. So let's start with what happened to Chris's body fat during this time. As you can see right here, it started off at 14.8%. He got down to a measured 4.5%, and six months later was back up to 14.6%. Now, 4.5% for all the bros and broettes out there that worry about, oh, I'm at 3% body fat, I'm at 10% body fat, it's an arbitrary number. It doesn't really matter what body fat says how low it is because it, it's different, it can be measured in different ways. Let's just say this, Chris was shredded, striated glutes, split hamstrings, so lean that he was able to compete at the highest level of natural bodybuilding, and Chris is a big guy. He's over 200 pounds on stage. He was probably a little under 200 pounds at 4.5% body fat. But I've been around Chris. He's a big freaking dude. So trust me when I tell you when 4.5% for Chris was absolutely shredded. I'll even include some pictures of Chris in the, uh, in the video here so you get a reference for just what he looks like. Now, let's look at what happened to some of his hormones and talk about what those hormones do. So everyone's familiar with what testosterone is, the male hormone, right? So at the beginning of contest prep, six months out before he got on stage, he was at 9.22 nanograms per milliliter, right? Now, as you can see, he got down to 2.27 around showtime. And it was actually a little bit lower than that at the three month out mark. So his testosterone level dropped dramatically. The normal range for testosterone is between 2.9 and 13 nanograms per milliliter. So at the end of contest prep, testosterone is really low. Now let's talk about ghrelin. So here's ghrelin. At the beginning of contest prep, it was at 633. The normal range for ghrelin is between 300 and 800. It got up to 883. Now what does ghrelin do? Ghrelin makes you hungry. Ghrelin is the appetite hormone. So the higher your ghrelin goes, the hungrier you feel. So I think all of us that have dieted for a long period of time and gotten really lean can relate to the fact that ghrelin was very much elevated after a long contest prep. The next hunger hormone that we talk about is leptin. Well, we know that ghrelin increases appetite, so leptin's job is to reduce appetite. So you can see in its absence, you're going to be hungrier. Actually, very low levels of leptin are associated with uncontrollable feeding, uncontrollable eating. They've actually given leptin injections to some people who can't control their eating. Finally, the last hormone I want to talk about is cortisol, just because it literally doubled. Cortisol is responsible for helping to store fat and helping to break down muscle. So when we see a number like this double, even though he stayed within the normal range, he literally doubled his cortisol by the time contest prep came around. And then you can see six months later, all of these numbers, Ghrelin was back down, leptin was back up, 
cortisol was on its way down still. Testosterone was actually back up higher than where he started prep. So six months is basically what it took to get his hormones back to a similar place. And that's consistent with what I believe as a coach, what I've experienced as an athlete, and what I do for those that I work with. The final thing we want to take a look at is contest prep strength. So what's really cool about this study is they did so many cool things. They actually tested one rep maxes at the beginning of prep and they tested it throughout. So I'm not going to give you numbers. Chris is a very strong guy, but I will just give you percentages. So for his squat, bench, and deadlift, he lost strength on all three lifts. 13.8% on his squat, 8.4% on his bench, and 7% on his deadlift. So why does that matter? Why does all this information matter when I'm trying to explain to you that at the end of contest prep, when you start reverse dieting, when you start adding calories back in, you're not in a good place to put on a bunch of muscle? Well, here's the thing. Your body fat is really low. Unless you start overfeeding drastically, you're not going to have a bunch of body fat. Your strength is low. So when your strength is low and your body fat is low and you start trying to overlift, it's a recipe for injury. Also, there's some things happening here with cortisol being elevated, ghrelin being elevated, and leptin being down. You see, when you stop your diet and you start eating again, you're going to eat a big meal, right? Everyone goes out the night of the show and they have a huge meal and they feel good for about 5-10 minutes. The problem is your hormones are still going to be so out of whack for so long that you are not going to feel full. You're not going to psychologically feel full. You're literally going to feel like you didn't eat anything. And for some people, they might even be hungrier when that meal started. So now you're starting an overfeeding cycle of trying to feed your hunger, which is not going to happen. You're going to be hungry during this period. When you're hungry and you're overfeeding and your cortisol is high, you're going to store body fat very quickly. Now, is that a bad thing? I'm not opposed to it. Now let's talk philosophy, right? So you've seen the numbers, you've seen specifically what's going to happen. Now we're post contest. Why is it not a good idea to believe that you're going to put on a bunch of muscle? Well, you're weaker than you've been in a long time. Your hormones are in a bad position. Your testosterone is really low. So where in all of that do you believe that you're going to put on a bunch of muscle? Well, if you overeat, and I've, and we've all heard stories of people being 15, 20, 30 pounds over stage weight within a week. If you put on that much body fat and have that much glycogen and fluid in your body after months of dieting, you are going to feel like He-Man. The weights are going to fly, but the strength is not going to be higher, right? It's only going to be more endurance. You're going to have more energy for recovery. You're going to have more energy for training. You're going to feel better, but you're also going to be, have tons of body fat that you didn't have before. So it comes down to decision making. For some of us, that's okay. For those of us that don't want to compete again or don't want to compete for several years and want to get right into slamming the weights, you can put on body fat quickly and feel better. In fact, that's what I suggest for most of my clients to do that aren't competing again within a few months or a year. Let's focus on getting some healthy return to hormones, healthy return to function and strength, but we want to do it in a controlled manner. I didn't talk much about metabolism here. The reason being, I have another video called Fixing Your Metabolism, where I literally go through the process of dieting a bodybuilder down for six months and increasing calories. At the end of this diet, Chris's metabolism was adapted. It was very adapted. It was adapted to the point where it was very difficult for him to lose any weight. And if he had overfed very quickly, he would have put body fat on very quickly. You see, metabolism doesn't adapt in a day, a week, a month. It's a long process. So yes, you can see some benefit to metabolic rate if you overfeed and put on body fat very quickly, but it's going to be minimal. You're going to outpace that by putting on body fat quicker than the metabolism adapts upward. So as you can see, my main goal as a coach is what matters to the person. Don't buy into the hype. That post contest, you need to be eating a ton of food, lifting a ton of weight. It's just not sensible. You're not going to put on any more muscle than you would have at any other time. In fact, it's going to be harder for you to put on muscle just because of the position that your body's in. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't train hard because coming out of a contest, you're going to be motivated. Your season's over. You're focused on that next goal. That's what we want to do. Hopefully, guys, this was clear 
I wanted to try to give you some explanation of the science behind this. Again, if you're interested in what's happening with the metabolic rate and metabolism, watch my video called Fixing the Metabolism. I'll try to link it in here somewhere. I'm not really good with the YouTube you know, editing stuff. But I'll try to put it in here. If you haven't watched that video, that'll explain what happens to metabolism during contest prep. This was just some interesting insight. I love the Chris Foz study because I, as a natural bodybuilder, experienced all of the things. They even, if you read the study, you'll even see they, they talked about his mood. So they did a study called POMS where they checked his mood throughout and his mood elevated better at the beginning of prep. You know that feeling when you start losing weight and you feel good and you're looking shredded. And then by the end, it got worse and worse and worse to the point where he was a miserable person. And I can relate to that. And anyone who has dieted for a long period of time most likely can relate to that as well. So thank you for the fantastic question. No, post-contest is not a period of great metabolism and great muscle building opportunity. It's a period of great fat gain opportunity. Your body is literally primed to store as much body fat as it can very quickly. That's where we get body fat overshooting and that's where we can run into problems in the long term if you plan to compete again soon. So this is where reverse dieting comes into play. This is where understanding how to restore metabolic rate without putting on body fat too quickly. And there's a lot of variables here. I'm not going to give you black and white answers on what you should do or shouldn't do, but at least now you can understand what's going on and what to expect. Anyway, guys, it's Tuesday. Have an awesome day. I'm going to get back to work. I really appreciate you guys' feedback. If you have comments or questions, please put them below. I can do follow-up videos or I can go more in depth or we can talk about another topic altogether. Tomorrow I'm going to address a few other questions. I'm gonna to try to get a few in. As I said, the comments on my Instagram post have gone a little bit crazy, so, but I wanna get through them all. I don't care how long it takes me because uh, I really appreciate every question that was asked and I want you guys to know that. So follow my Instagram if you're not. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and if you enjoy the video, I like likes too. So thank you guys. Have an awesome Tuesday and I will talk to you tomorrow.